Hello, hello, my beautiful friend. It feels so good to be back to podcasting after taking a break so that I could fill my cup, focus on settling into my new home here in San Francisco, and of course, focus on finishing my Extreme Hunger Course, which I am so excited and so proud to announce is finally completed and will launch in just a couple weeks from today. I have seriously never been prouder of anything in my life than this course. It is the A to Z guide of everything you need to know and honestly everything I wish I had known when it comes to understanding extreme hunger. And even if you don't have extreme hunger right now or rather think you don't have extreme hunger because extreme hunger is not just physical, This course is so jam-packed with value that I swear anyone in recovery from a restrictive eating disorder will benefit from it. You'll learn to shift your mindset in all areas of recovery. You'll gain an incredible understanding of the biology of the human body. We dive into the science behind digestive issues and, of course, how to heal them. And there's a whole module on weight gain in which I dive into even deeper into the topic of overshoot. So if you do enjoy today's episode on overshoot, you are without a doubt going to appreciate my course even more. You can still get on the wait list at livelabelfree.com slash extreme dash hunger dash course. So that's just live label free like the name of this podcast dot com forward slash extreme dash hunger dash course to be the first one to know when the course launches and trust me you are going to want to be on that list i have an insane bonus offer only for those of you who are on my wait list so if you are seriously committed to full recovery get your booty on that wait list and with that said let's dive into today's episode Welcome to Live Label Free, the podcast where we talk about all things eating disorder recovery, autism, entrepreneurship, and so much more. I'm your host, Livia Serra, and my mission is to inspire individuals from across the globe to live a life in which they feel fulfilled and free from limiting labels. I am so excited to have you here and cannot wait to dive into the episode. If you clicked on this episode, you've probably heard of the term overshoot weight. It's a term I've mentioned in my blog post on experiencing extreme hunger while being weight restored, which I will link in the show notes, and I of course thoroughly unpack the topic of overshoot in my upcoming extreme hunger course. I also frequently get asked how long overshoot lasts and how to lose overshoot weight, which is why I wanted to record an episode answering all of your questions. You'll learn what overshoot is, why it's an important part of recovery, I talk about set point theory and BMI, and I share some game-changing mindset shifts that will make this process a lot easier easier. So first things first, what is overshoot? Simply put, body fat overshooting is the phenomenon of putting on more weight than your pre-eating disorder or quote-unquote target weight in recovery. There's a lot to unpack when it comes to defining how much extra weight defines overshoot. So I'll start off by stating that the weight you were at before you started messing with your food, for lack of a better description, is completely arbitrary right now. As most of us know and have experienced, an eating disorder often starts in early teenage years. So if you were to return to your pre-eating disorder weight right now, that would make your weight that of a child, a weight you probably should not return to if you want to achieve full recovery. And I do use the word probably here as I am fully aware that some people's pre-eating disorder weight may have been higher than their ideal body weight. This leads me to my next point, which encompasses ideal body weight, set point theory, and target slash goal weights. The set point weight theory states that each of us has a genetically programmed weight range that our body will try to maintain in order to ensure 
optimal biological functioning. It explains why some people are naturally leaner, while others are healthier at a higher body fat percentage. In essence, the set point theory vindicates body diversity and is the central pillar of the health at every size movement, which preaches this idea that ideal body weight has no one size. Thus, your ideal body weight is the weight range in which your body naturally settles when you are engaging in a lifestyle that supports your optimal level of health, and it will be different from person to person. So if everyone has a different body fat percentage or weight range that is uniquely healthy to them, what about BMI? Well, as with many things in life, your ideal body weight or set point weight cannot be determined by anyone other than your own body. Just like your height, the size of your hands and feet, or the color of your hair, your body decides what you look like. Unfortunately, we live in a society where people believe they constantly must micromanage everyone and everything, including our own bodies. We dye our hair to quote-unquote look better and buy uncomfortable shoes to become taller or quote-unquote more attractive. And of course, there is nothing wrong with these things. I mean, if they help you feel more confident, you do you. However, there definitely is something wrong when we start putting our health and happiness in the hands of people that can and never will possess the knowledge of our uniquely capable bodies. As I explained in a recent podcast episode called The Shocking Truth About BMI, which I will also link in the show notes, BMI does not embrace body diversity in any way, shape, or form. And yes, pun totally intended here. BMI was a system invented in the early 1800s by researcher Lambert Adolphe Jacques Quetelet, who notably was nowhere near a medical doctor. Getzeles desire to define the measurements of l'homme moyen, which means the average man in French, resulted in his invention of the Getzeles Index, which was later named Body Mass Index in 1972. Getzeler based his findings of human proportions and measurements solely on those of white European men, meaning that BMI was never even meant for the general population. Women, people of color, immigrants, poor people, and disabled people were completely left out of Getzeler's studies. So why is it that health professionals are still using this system today? What's even worse is that healthcare professionals often use your BMI in combination with your pre-eating disorder weight to define your quote-unquote target or quote-unquote goal weight in eating disorder recovery. Besides the fact that neither BMI nor your pre-ED weight are reliable factors in determining what you should weigh right now, another pair of factors that most professionals conveniently leave out of their calculation is the concept of energy deficit and energy debt. Now, if you are unfamiliar with these terms, I encourage you to listen to my episode on the biological importance of honoring your extreme hunger, in which I describe how one gets into energy deficit in the first place and how prolonged energy deficit leads to the buildup of energy debt. Once you understand the damage that energy debt causes, you can maximize your understanding of overshoot and why it's so damn important. With that said, the reason why overshoot is so important is because it's a prerequisite to allow complete physical recovery of your body, which, as we now know, is also directly related to your mental recovery. When you have spent years under eating, over exercising, or a combination of both in most cases, the body goes into a negative energy balance and must turn to internal sources for energy. This means your body will literally eat itself up as it leaches energy from your organs, your bones, and other important biological systems to ensure your survival. Of course, this energy must be paid back at some point, which our beautiful friend Extreme Hunger helps us out with big time. 
There was so much stigma around needing to eat a lot of food in recovery from restrictive eating, but what most people often forget is that you have so many calories to make up for. Not only do you have to make up for the calories you literally missed due to underfueling, but you also need to consume extra calories to ensure that there is enough energy available for the repair work of the internal damage done due to energy debt. These quote-unquote extra calories are all on top of the calories you already need to eat to support your daily life, even if you never restricted your food in the first place. So in a way, it's almost like you're eating for three people, which completely justifies eating upwards of 9,000 or 10,000 calories per day, assuming your baseline daily caloric needs are around 3,000 calories. The importance of paying back energy debt is directly correlated to the importance of overshooting your weight. Just like you need to consume extra calories for a consistent period of time to pay back that energy debt, you will also need to carry extra body fat for a sustained period of time to ensure optimal healing circumstances. You know how when babies are born, they're all cute and chubby and fat? Or how kids gain a lot of weight during puberty and then suddenly shoot upwards during their growth spurt? Well, biology has not done this for sits and giggles, although looking back at chubby baby photos may be funny now. Um, But fat storage is absolutely essential for growth and repair of any kind. So no, you may not need to gain height anymore, but all of the internal damage that you cannot see must have sufficient energetic reserves to be repaired. Okay, so now that you know just how important it is to honor your extreme hunger and allow yourself to gain a lot of weight or whatever amount of weight you need to gain, you may be wondering, how long will I have to carry this extra weight? How long does the overshoot last? The simple answer is, as long as it takes for your body to fully pay off energy debt. Once you have repaired all of the internal damage and are no longer in energy deficit, the body has no reason to store additional energy and will naturally settle within your ideal body weight range as previously explained by the set point theory. And I know this is probably not the answer you want to hear, but again, no one else can determine the look or duration of your healing process besides your own body. Unfortunately, this lack of clarity about how long overshoot lasts is also where most people go wrong in recovery. What often happens is that someone will be doing really, really well recovery-wise, meaning they're honoring all forms of extreme hunger, they're allowing themselves to rest, and they're accepting natural weight gain. When they continue to gain weight and then go into overshoot, however, the unhelpful comments may start and said recovering individual may feel uncomfortable and fearful that they will stay at this higher weight forever. The saddest part of all of this is that healthcare professionals may even recommend weight loss because overshoot often results in a BMI that is higher than in quote unquote the healthy weight range. So the person who was doing so well now actively tries to lose weight again, and this is such a shame. After all the hard work they've done to challenge their eating disorder both physically and mentally and literally being so close to the finish line by allowing full healing by going into overshoot, all of this hard work is then suddenly undone the moment they start to lose weight again. Why? Because weight loss that has not naturally been initiated by the body signals to the body that there are not enough resources available to heal. And what does the body do when it believes there is a lack of abundance? It starts to conserve energy. And the whole process of distrust starts all over again. All that said, if you want to reach true full recovery, you must lose this mindset of wanting to lose your overshoot weight. I know this is so difficult as it means fully surrendering to the process and, of course, surrendering to your body, but surrender is the only way through. And that's a wrap for today's episode. I hope it inspired you or perhaps gave you the permission you've been looking for to continue gaining weight. 
If this episode was meaningful to you in any way, please screenshot you listening and tag me on Instagram at live label free so more people like you can listen and learn and allow themselves to go into overshoot as always thank you so much for spending this time with me and i will catch you in the next episode bye